Welcome to On Texas Football. I'm CJ Vogel, joined today by Jerry Hamilton for this week's Talking Ball. And Jerry, it's it's a game week. It, I mean, it, it feels like it. You know, I know Texas has been building up this spring season for what you know, I think we all believe to be a very uh, exciting uh, display at DKR this Saturday. Um, of course, we, we've talked about it the past two weekends with the scrimmages, a number of storylines building right now. But overall, with the way that Texas has, I, I would say, re, rebuilt since seeing 10 or 12 guys depart for the NFL draft this year, uh, a lot of excitement right now, of course, with the high school kids coming in as well. There's 17 of them on campus, a number of transfers. We finally get to see them, you know, put on a show. And I think that's exciting. You've been on record a number of times saying this is the most, you know, exciting, uh, anticipatory spring game that Texas has had in quite a while. So yeah, no doubt. Up to I, the I, game, go ahead and, and give me your thoughts there. Yeah, I, th I think there it is for multitude of reasons, right? I mean, uh, number one is Texas is moving to the SEC next year. That changes, that brings a new level of excitement. I mean, Georgia Bulldogs are playing in Austin next year. Florida Gators are playing in Austin next year. The AM rivalry is back. Texas goes to Arkansas. I mean, it, that right there before you even get into Texas OU, which uh, obviously, and, you know, everybody else you play in the SEC, Mississippi State, Kentucky, but it's those, it's a different level of excitement. And that excitement comes at a perfect time because Texas won the last Big 12 championship, went to the college football playoff. Oh, and by the way, they beat Bama. Uh, by 10 uh, last year in Tuscaloosa, right? Uh, the only team to ever win by double, double digits and Nick Saban's tenure in Tuscaloosa. And then you have the draft. And then you have three straight top five recruiting classes. Then you have being a blue blood in the portal, which is a good place to be. And then you have what you mentioned earlier, CJ. So you have all that. Quinn comes back. A lot of really good players come back at Texas, right? They lost some guys for sure, but that's where you want your program to be. You want to lose 10 to the draft every year and be able to withstand that. But what's changed, too, on top of that is what you mentioned, 17 early enrollees and seven new guys from the portal. There's 24 new faces that you hear about during spring practice, but now you get to see on Saturday, whether that's in person at DKR, whether you're at home watching on LHM, you get to see more faces entering the program in the spring than ever before. And that really started changing five, six years ago where more kids started graduating early from high school, right? Seven, six, seven, eight years ago, you 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 maybe only had at times you didn't have a true too deep at some positions. Right. But now with 24 new names in the Texas program this spring, you have depth everywhere for spring, and that makes it better for a spring game, spring practice, for the coaching staff uh, to build that depth and develop those players. So it's kind of a culmination of everything. Oh, and by the way, then there's Chris Del Conte and the great job he does with Bevo Boulevard and making everything an event around UT football, which will happen again Saturday. Absolutely. I remember, obviously, 2023, there were a number of big storylines that came out of that game. You know, Malik played well. Jonathan had a big play. We got to see the emergence of uh, of A.D. Mitchell as well with the one-handed touchdown. Uh, the defensive line had a lot of pressure and what felt like uh, was a, a bit of, you know, the coming of the times with that group a year ago. Uh, before we get to what you anticipate seeing on the field today, or uh, this weekend, excuse me, uh, do you mind telling us about our, our sponsor this weekend for Talking Ball, the Longhorn Wealth Management Group? Yeah, that is a Longhorn Wealth Management Group. John Donovan, he is the president. Thank you to him and his team for being the uh, sole sponsor of Talking Ball. Uh, today is federal tax day, so it probably feels like the IRS is raiding your bank account today, but take the heart in knowing there are ways to stop the IRS, IRS carnage in your future. John Donovan and his team at Longhorn Wealth specialize designing and implementing the solutions for their clients, which provide tax, manage, investing, tax-free and tax-efficient retirement income planning, and tax-free transfer of wealth to the next generation. John is a certified financial planner who has spent over 30 years working with his clients to reduce the impact of taxes on the growth of their investments and the income income they work so very hard for, and then maximizing the enjoyment of their retirement by coordinating and optimizing tax-efficient and tax-free retirement income sources for them. So to take advantage of John Donovan's CFP fiduciary responsibility to put your best interests first in all the areas of financial planning by simply giving John and the Longhorn Wealth team a call, 972 
4900 or visit longhornwealth.net to schedule your free 90-minute consultation to explore how they can help you and your family keep the IRS at bay and achieve tax-efficient financial independence and security. And John, as always, has a message to everybody. Hook them. Perfect. Thank you, Jerry. And thank you to John Donovan and Longhorn Wealth Management Group for sponsoring this week's Talking Ball. Jerry, I wanted to ask you, uh, because we just talked about how you know exciting this game is going to yeah. be, uh, but also because of the new faces, Texas will get an idea of, you know, one, the depth and two, the talent. We've heard about it throughout the spring. I wanted to ask you specifically, what group, position groups, will you be keeping the closest eye on, whether it be this new offensive line that we expect to be a strength, the secondary, uh, the edges? Where where will you be watching most closely on Saturday? I think one position that where the depth really has to, to kind of happen for Texas is at corner, right? I mean, uh, CJ, last year it was Ryan Watts, Terrence Brooks, and Manny Muhammad, Gavin Holmes. Those are the four guys, right? Those are the guys that everybody talked about. When Ryan Watts went out to injury, there was a drop-off for Texas, right? Um, Terrence Brooks in year three. Manny Muhammad in year two has been tremendous uh, this spring and obviously fighting through a little bit of a hamstring tweak. Had an interception Saturday in the scrimmage. Um, Second one of the spring that we've heard about. Then Gavin Holmes is back, the fastest of the corners. Is he going to be more physical, stronger player this year? But really that depth has to come into play, uh, CJ. And I know we've talked about it some, but whether that's Warren Roberson, whether that's Kobe Black, whether that's Wardell Mack, whether that's a Jade Barron cross training, Texas has to solidify that depth at corner. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, 100%. And it's not because I don't think that they're not talented, but because, Correct. you know, Agreed. that one guy goes down. I mean, you have to know what's behind them. We had a good idea last year, of course, what Malik Muhammad would be on the field. And that's not to say that, you know, it, we were expecting him to jump on. Uh, to the field at DKR and, and and dominate right away. That that's rare for early a young cornerback. But we knew at the time coming in from South Oak Cliff, this was a guy that hangs around the football, makes plays on the ball very often, and can certainly uh, you know duck his head down and go make a play. You know, coming down the field to make a tackle. So that's what we knew. But seeing it was a little bit different. Right now, we've not seen that, or at least heard about that from a guy like a Warren Roberson or a Kobe Black or even Ward Elmack. So. That, to me, is a big piece yeah. uh, that I want to see. And, of course, the wide receivers going up against this group who we expect to be a little bit faster holistically or at least having a little bit more explosiveness to that group than what we saw a year ago. Going up against that group is going to be very exciting to me because I think we're going to see two very talented quarterbacks, which segues me to Arch Manning. Yeah. Jerry, we're going to see the most out of Arch Manning with a competent offensive line, a good group of wide receivers around him than we've probably ever seen uh, in a live situation as a Texas Longhorn should be very exciting. Letting him, you know, kind of take the reins off and let him go. Oh, well, look, you know, all it's going to do, the one thing I can guarantee from Saturday is there's going to be thousands of articles put out. If Arch goes 8 of 15, where is he transferring to? If he goes 10 of 15, should he be battling Quinn for the starting job? I mean, two completions either way are going to send the uh, the news stories in different directions because that's what Arch Manning does. Uh, but once you get past all the BS, which is what it is, uh, you get to actually see Arch Manning on the field for an extended period of time in a situation that, like last year in the spring game, he was running 13 quarterback. Um, and, and he had some walk-on offensive linemen, and he wasn't uh, sitting across looking at walk-on defenders, right? So this will be the first time he's got to play with the twos, and if it's twos versus one, twos versus twos, he's he's going to have the first opportunity to really show where his development's at, um, probably make some plays with his feet, uh, because uh, you, you know Colin Simmons and Trey Moore are going to create some pressures uh, against that number two offensive line. Uh, from time to time. So, yeah, I think you're going to get to see the most we've seen from Arch Manning and get a glimpse of – I. you saw a little bit of the athleticism in the Texas Tech game. I think we'll see more of that Saturday. But, of course, the, the main event with Arch Manning will be all the articles that are written and what is the craziness people are going to say for clicks. Hey, you got to feed the family somehow, Jerry, and that all stems from clicks. Huh? I mean, that's how that goes. But with Arch specifically, it'll also be interesting to see how much Texas uses the helmet communication with their quarterbacks in the spring game. Uh, That's been something that we've been monitoring across the country during other spring games is how often do you see the quarterbacks duck down and and hear from their helmet communication. Will Sarkeesian use that? We've heard Quinn Ewers in in the the offensive side of the ball, at least, has used it in the past. 
the defensive side of the ball in the spring, not so much. So that'll be interesting to see if it's Anthony Hill, John A. Barron, Michael Taft, whoever, if they do use it in the spring game, uh, who's that guy? But that segues me then to the linebacking group, who I think we all expect to see uh, some positives from there's a lot of speed there, a lot of athleticism with David Benda and Anthony Hill in the middle. But similarly to cornerback, who's going to be your third guy? Is it a Kendrick Blackshear? Do you expect him to jump into the role right away? Leon Lafau, we know Maurice Blackwell, very talented guy, but more so a Sam backer than a Michael or a Will. Will he get run in the middle? Uh, what are your thoughts on that group as a whole? And uh, again, going up against that running back group, we expect some uh, some fun showdowns. Yeah, the first thing is how much are you actually going to see of Anthony Hill, right? He doesn't need to go play 50, 60 snaps in this game, right? There's some guys that will play more than others. I think Saturday was going to be big for the depth to see where the depth is. What does Leon Lafau look like in year two? Where is Darian? What does Darian Gillette look like? Some of these younger guys. I mean, you're gonna you may see a Ty Anthony Smith, which excites some people to see the freshman. Um, it, 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 whether he's third or fourth team, you may see more of him in snaps than you do actually David Benda in the game. I think that's what makes spring games so much fun is that sometimes the younger guys get more snaps than the older guys. So it's really a first look at some of those younger players. But like, like you said, that depth uh, at linebacker, um, it, it, what is that going to look like? And how much does uh, does Trey Moore line up as a traditional linebacker mm. at times in this defense? Is, is tech, what's Texas going to show defensively? Because I do think during in games this year, you're going to see Sorrell, Burke, and Trey Moore or Colin Simmons on the field at the same time. Uh, so how much of that are they going to show in the spring game? But really that those young guys, that young linebacker group uh, that signed last year, and it's Cecilia Kana edge versus linebacker kind of what are those guys looking like in year two in the program and for some of these guys it's still their first spring practice I mean right. Barry and Gillette uh, had spring last year but he was he was coming off the ACL this is full contact spring for him right Leon Lafau had a spring but Cecilia Kana did not some of those younger players uh, did not have spring last year so the depth is going to be so key for me outside of how many snaps do your does your Anthony Hill and your Ben to actually play Saturday yeah, that'll, of course, be very interesting. I'm glad you mentioned uh, Trey Moore dropping back into coverage because that kind of took me by surprise hearing it from Anthony Hill two weeks ago during his player availability. Uh, we know the quickness, the BGO that he brings to the table, but, you know, Anthony Hill's like, yeah, whenever he has to drop back and cover someone, he does it very well. So that'll be interesting. I'm not sure, again, like you said, how much we'll see of that from Texas uh, in this spring game. But, of course, kind of leaving something for future offensive coordinators to have to scheme around. It might be a little bit of an Easter egg for uh, PK and his guys there. Uh, but sticking with that linebacking group, you mentioned Ty Anthony Smith. We've also heard about a number of early enrollees so far. Ryan Wingo on the offensive side of the ball, Colin Simmons on the edge. Uh, of course, Xavier Filsamy, another one that we expect to see or at least find a way onto the field early in his Texas playing days. What are you going to be looking for out of this early enrollee group? There's a lot of them. There's going to be all over the field. Anyone uh, in particular you'll have your eye on? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, Colin Simmons for sure, because I, I think the, the the there's two things that I expect to be different from the Texas defense improved in 2024, and that is uh, uh, the ability to get pressure on the quarterback from the edge position. Um, and that starts with Trey Moore and Colin Simmons. And Colin Simmons has had two solid scrimmages already right he seems to be a lights on guy especially as he's been battling he had the high ankle late in his senior season I mean he battled through that uh but so what does that look like what what does that edge uh quickness look like for Colin Simmons in the spring game uh because I do think that's an area uh that and safety are going to be much improved so and, and it goes to this too I mean uh, Phil Samee and Jordan Johnson or Bell they're going to get a lot of snaps as the third team safeties um and I know we're going to talk about you know some of some of those safeties in a second but what do those guys look like because this is a different environment for them, a spring game environment versus the practice field uh, there at Denius or even the scrimmages. This is this is different. Um, and those guys are also going to be involved. They may be second team gunners. Right. So uh, what do some of these freshmen look like? Obviously, down the list a little bit is Daniel Cruz will get run at third team center. Brandon Baker will get run at third team right tackle. What do those guys look like? Then a big one for me is Alex January. Yeah. Alex January has a chance to be a rotational player this season. Um, what is he going to look like in the spring game? Because, you know, some of these freshmen hit wall, hit walls, some of them don't, right? And the bigger guys tend to hit some walls midway through the spring. We'll see where they're all at. But, uh, you know, Alex January's had a productive spring. And then, obviously, 
uh, Ryan Wingo for me is is just to see the gear, the extra gear in person, because I do think he'll have some targets and he'll have some opportunities Saturday. But I'll tell you two guys that are very interesting for me, CJ, are the running backs, Christian Clark and Jarrett Gibson, uh, because we were talking on coffee and football this morning. Last year, Cedric Baxter battled injury. Jonathan Brooks went out with an ACL late in the year. Your depth at running back goes beyond uh, RB1 and RB2 in college football. It just is, uh, even if you have two off weeks now in college football. Um, so what do those freshmen look like? This is their first real game action, even though it's spring game action at Texas. The scrimmages, they both had really good moments. I heard Texas thinks the running back room is loaded. Uh, but what do those guys look like in person? The violence of Christian Clark's cuts, the consistency yep. of Jarrett Gibson in his balance, in his contact balance, in his power for a young back. Uh, what do those guys look like, and are they involved in the passing game? At all, because I think that running back depth is going to be called upon this year, as it always is. And we know Cedric Baxter, we know Jaden Blue, and Trey Weisner's had a really good spring, and we know the name Savion Red. But what does one of the two freshmen look like? They could be a guy next year. That'll be interesting to me. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up that running back spot because we know it's very talented. We know that they have a lot of bodies there, but as a result, there's kind of a long waiting list to yes. get on the field list, you know, and we'll give those true freshman guys some time. Of course, they've been on campus for about three months now, but for guys like a Trey Wisner, even a Savion Red, are you able to showcase enough at the spring game to warrant more snaps in the fall? Of course, it's not going to be the end all be all, but it does give a little bit of a carryover and some momentum going into uh, summer conditioning winter uh, fall camp everything that you know kind of builds up carries over and so that that leads me to ask you Jerry who needs to play well some guys with the portal opening up uh, yeah. the, the 16th 20th is the spring game so what there, there's going to be some movement afterwards who needs to play well to get that momentum going for the fall I guarantee you a lot, many of the eyes outside of quarterback many many thousands of eyes are going to be on the interior defensive line right that's just a reality of this team, you lose a first rounder and a second or third round pick, right? And um, Alfred Collins will have eyes on him, but look, he's a fifth, he's gonna be a fifth year senior. Vernon Broughton, same thing. It's uh, people are really gonna be curious to look at Savea, the newcomer, um, Sadir Mitchell. What does he look like? Apparently, he's had some better practices of late. Alex January, the freshman. Aaron Bryant has received praise from Jake Majors. What does that look like Saturday, right? So, uh, because we know Texas is going portal deep sea fishing here coming up in about oh, uh, 12 hours, right? I mean, uh, well, I guess it's about 18 hours officially. Um, and, and we'll be talking about some of that stuff on ontexasfootball.com. We have a portal thread up. Uh, so, But interior D-line, people are going to have Jare Bledsoe. What does he look like in year three? I mean, it's time for some of these guys to take a step. Then I think at the edge position, there's a, a lot of talent at edge. There's a lot of numbers. Is Colton Vosick, does he look like a healthy player? What does he look like? Jamon Tapp. What does he look like? Because he's a name that people throw around. Could he enter the portal? Could he not? Um, so I, I think that edge position, I think defensive line is going to have a lot of eyes on them. And then I think the left guard position. Uh, because Hayden Connors, he, he's played left guard. He's worked some of the backup center. He's getting a push from Neto and Cole Hudson at left guard. How much of a rotation is there there? Well, where does Hayden Connor play the majority of his snaps Saturday? What does that offensive line look like? Um, I think Texas is, has a pretty solid – um, eight man, a seven man rotation right now. Uh, what does that look like? What's the snap breakdown? Um, and how does that off Cam Williams at right tackle? How he'll have a lot of eyes on him, CJ, because look, I mean, uh, Christian Jones is the only offensive lineman that starter that was lost last year. He's had, he's moving up the draft board. Is probably a guard in the NFL? Uh, but Cam Williams has one start under his belt, and he's a guy that he garners a lot of attention just because of his size and, right. and his and his skill set. But people are going to want to say, what does this guy look like on the field Saturday? Because it's going to be the most he's been on the field as a first team uh, right tackle at Texas. Yeah, it will be. And of course, the definition of the quote unquote big humans, that's going to be uh, something that I think a lot of Texas fans are very excited about to see him up to speed and see how he handles the the quickness of a Colton Vosick, uh, Trey Moore, Colin Simmons, uh, Baron Sorrell. Another name I want to mention is Justice Finkley. How quickly yeah. does he find a role with this group? We've seen him sparingly throughout the last couple of years. But, of course, with the new bodies, is that a guy that, you know, sinks or swims? That You just got to put it that bluntly, basically. How big of a jump does a Ethan Burke look like he could make? from? Because yeah. his jump from year one to year two was massive. 
It was noticeable. You Absolutely. Like a guy that's going to make another big jump. And what about you, CJ? Who do you have your eyes on? The, obviously, the defensive edge spot for me. I, I, I want to know, and, and we heard about it a little bit this past weekend after scrimmage number two, is the wide receivers. You know, we know that they're quick. They have the big play ability. Yeah. But will there be enough consistency? We heard about some balls in the ground, maybe some uh, lack of consistency when it comes to, uh, you know, holding in passes uh, in the traffic. Yeah. Yes, that's going to be uh, something for me because, of course, in the SEC, you've talked about it when it comes to the, the, the combine and guys going to the NFL. How many NFL, NFL DB uh, draft hopefuls come from the SEC? Seemingly everybody. So yeah. that to me is going to be something that if Texas wide receivers aren't able to do that against the group that they're going up in practice today, uh, that's going to be a bit of a worrisome issue for me moving into the fall. Of course, Quinn should help, but those guys still have to make big plays right. when it matters. So uh, the wide receiving group is is one that I'll be watching very closely. I think CJ, one name for both of us is, is, is Jelani McDonald as well, because he looks amazing in uniform. And apparently he's come on this spring at safety. Mm -hmm. And look, he should. This is the time where you should start making some strides. Talking about a guy that was more of a jack of all trades in high school, played quarterback. So last year, last season was the first time he zeroed in on one position. This is an important spring for him where he's more comfortable as a safety, right? So he looks tremendous. I think a lot of eyes are going to be on him and the safety position in general. Because if people look back on the 23 Texas team and they say, what was the weakness of that team? The number one answer, answer people will say was safety. Right. Um, and you've had Andrew McCuba as an addition. You've had Derek Williams his first spring. Uh, he's going to make a big jump from year one to year two. And Michael Tafts, obviously, he's he has his spot. But then you have um, Jelani McDonald uh, at safety full time, right, with that group as well. And then you have the freshman Phil Sami and Jordan Johnson Rebel. A lot of intrigue with Phil Sami and Jordan Johnson Rebel. So that safety position, I think, is going to be the most improved position on the Texas team. But I, and I do think there are going to be a lot of eyes on it. Absolutely. And, and I mean, there's going to be a lot of eyes everywhere. You know, the SEC move, as you mentioned, it's going to be a big recruiting weekend as well. Yeah. And we'll cover a lot of that tomorrow in the recruiting breakdown. But, uh, Jerry, if you look back a year ago, this was about the time Texas really started moving along with Brandon Baker, uh, getting him onto the campus for the spring game and really start, you know, locking things down before yeah. uh, the summer official visits. We'll see just how much of a spectacle and show Texas is able to put on on the field, but we know behind the scenes that recruiting event's going to be, uh, you know, up there with some of the best events Texas hosts all year. Yeah, no doubt about it. And there's a, there could be upwards of tw combined 24 star, five star prospects in the 25 and 26 class on campus. Um, we we're, I was told this morning, uh, the 25s obviously take center stage, but John Turntine uh, will probably be there. Uh, the five-star 2026 offensive tackle from North Crowley. So it's going beyond 2025. Uh, but we have that list on ontexasfootball.com. And by the way, not a better time, guys, to go to ontexasfootball.com. We want you to be an OTFOG. $39.95 uh, year one to be an OTFOG. We want you guys to be part of the community with Bobby Burton. CJ, myself, Rod Babers, Blake Monroe. Uh, we have had hundreds and hundreds of signups already for this, but we would love that we are asking you come be an OG at OTF. We have fun on the message boards. We have the NCA portal threads up and rolling. That's going to be crazy. We have June official visits right around the corner, spring evaluation period, obviously all the spring game festivities. Uh, so we always appreciate ev everything the Texas fan base does for us, supporting us. Uh, and we'd love for you to be an OTF OG and be part of that dot com community. Perfect. Jerry, uh, I, I got one last question for you. But before we get there, do you mind uh, telling folks one more time about our, our sponsor for Talking Ball this weekend? Oh, you want to talk about an OTF OG, John Donovan, president of Longhorn Wealth Management Group. He is that. He is a proud Texas X's life member. Look, today is federal tax day, so it probably feels like the IRS is raiding your bank account today. But take heart in knowing there are ways to stop the IRS carnage in your future. John Donovan and his team at Longhorn Wealth specialize designing and implementing the solutions for their clients, which provide tax managed investing, tax free and tax efficient retirement income planning, and tax free transfer of wealth to the next generation. John is a certified financial planner who spent over 30 years working with his clients to reduce the impacts on taxes 
on the growth of their investments in the income they worked so hard for and then maximizing the enjoyment of their retirement by coordinating and optimizing tax efficient and tax free retirement income sources for them. So to take advantage of Don Donovan's CFP fiduciary responsibility to put your best interest first in all areas of financial planning by simply giving John and the Longhorn Wealth team a call at 972-707-4900 or visit longhornwealth.net to schedule your free 90-minute consultation on how to explore how Longhorn Wealth Management Group can help you and your family keep the IRS at bay and achieve tax-efficient financial independence and security. And as John always has, says, hook them. Perfect. Thank you, John Donovan and the Longhorn Wealth Management Group again for uh, for sponsoring Talking Ball this week. All right, Jerry, one last question, and it's going to be a quick one. But Monday, when we come, you know, coming back, talking about the spring game, who's that one guy? that's going to make that leap that we're going to be talking about having a big day uh, in the orange and white game. I, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Trey Moore um, because I think he's, he's one of the things he's done is he set the edge. Well, right. I mean, he's talked about with the BGO with the pass rush ability, uh, but I think the physicality he's going to bring the all around game he's going to bring. I think people are going to be talking about that him and Colin Simmons and Texas really, is combined with Bert, Sorrell and Burke really is going to be able to rush the passer uh, at a higher level in 2024. I like that. That'll be a big one. Of course, needing having that game changing edge just does so much for your defense. I'll go opposite side of the ball. I'll go Jaden blue. Just what we've heard so far this spring, the weight yep. that he's Good added, one. the speed that he already possesses. That to me sounds like a guy that will thrive similarly to what we saw last year when he had the highlight touchdown run uh, in the spring game a year ago. He's my pick. So that'll do it this week. We're talking ball. Uh, the spring game coming up, of course, Saturday at 1 p.m. on campus. A lot going on. Uh, a lot of activities coming up. Come meet us out Wednesday. Come meet us out Sunday, Saturday morning. We should have a lot of fun updating uh, everything that goes on for the Texas spring game. Of course, come join us on ontexasfootball.com. Become an OTF OG for just $39.95 uh, for the entire year. Uh, for Jerry Hamilton, I'm CJ Vogel. This has been Talking Ball. Hook them.